Around 128 million years ago, give or take, snakes popped up out of nowhere and started thriving on Earth, eventually branching out into around 4,000 species we have today. But it's not just because they ditched their limbs and got all long and slithery. Even though there are 25 groups of limbless lizards, snakes are the one who really hit the jackpot in terms of diversity. To figure out what makes snakes so successful, scientists looked at over 60,000 snake and lizard specimens from museums all over the world. According to them, snakes have been evolving faster than lizards in key ways, which gives them the upper hand when it comes to exploring new opportunities. So if you think this is creepy, hey, I'm right there with you. But let's push forward. One major factor of their success is their feeding habits. With their flexible skulls and keen sense of smell, snakes can eat animals way bigger than their heads and track down prey like champs. When dinosaurs got wiped out around 66 million years ago, snakes were ready to adapt to the changing world and fill those empty spots. Now, we're not sure why snakes evolve so quickly, but it's clear that there's something special in the grand scheme of evolution. Just like the sudden explosion of flowering plants, these macroevolutionary singularities have shaped life on our planet in unexpected ways. Now, snakes can be found almost everywhere on Earth, showing off a wide range of traits and habitats. They can be found in deserts, rainforests, grasslands, and even deep oceans. All snakes are predators, munching on different prey, including insects, small vertebrates, other snakes, and sometimes even larger mammals or humans. Ow! However, you won't see any snakes in Ireland. Why? Well, one of the most famous legends about St. Patrick involves him driving these reptiles out of Ireland. Still, experts think snakes never lived in Ireland to begin with, so it's more of a symbolic story than anything else. There are a few more places in the world where snakes don't exist, like Iceland, Greenland, New Zealand, and Antarctica. New Zealand's lack of snakes is especially intriguing considering its proximity to snake-heavy Australia. The reason for this seems to be the country's ever-changing climate, which makes it difficult for snakes to thrive. Now, even though New Zealand is snake-free, sea snakes occasionally make an appearance in its waters. The yellow-bellied sea snake and the yellow-lipped sea crate are known to visit the island every now and then. So when it comes to what country has the most snakes, Brazil takes the prize. With over 375 species calling it home, Brazil has a mix of harmless and dangerous snakes. The country's vast rainforests provide a perfect habitat for these reptiles, including famous constrictors like the anaconda, the boa constrictor, and the emerald tree boa. Brazil is also home to venomous snakes, such as the fur de lance and coral snakes. However, if you fear going to a Rio carnival just because you're terrified of Brazilian snakes, I've got some news for you. Out of 4,000 snake species in the world, only around 600 are venomous, and only about 200 of them can cause harm to humans. So fatal snake bites are less common than people might think. Chances you stumble upon a bad snake are like 5%. Now, it's hard to say exactly how many individual snakes there are out there as they tend to, you know, keep to themselves. However, scientists can make estimates about the number of specific species. For example, they believe that there could be as many as 1 million common garter snakes in the wild. Cute little guys! Unlike the super widespread common garter, the St. Lucia racer is one of the rarest snakes in the world. It had quite a roller coaster of a story thought to be extinct, then found again, then lost, and finally rediscovered in 2012. The survivors are spending time together on a teeny island called Maria Major after being wiped out on the mainland by mongooses and other invasive critters that like to snack on these harmless snakes. Another reason snakes hit an evolutionary jackpot is because they have this cool thing that they're basically solar-powered and depend on outside sources of heat or light. People often say they're cold-blooded, but that's not entirely accurate. Their blood isn't cold. The right word for them is ectothermic, which means their body temperature can change and is controlled by the environment. While mammals and birds can keep their temperature steady, 
reptiles must soak up the sun or find other ways to warm themselves up. Now, some snakes do not lay eggs, defying the traditional classification of reptiles as egg layers. While it may have been taught at school that all reptiles lay eggs, nature has its exceptions. About 70% of snakes lay eggs, but those living in colder environments give birth to live young because eggs would not survive in such conditions. Nature always has a way of challenging our expectations and classifications. Snakes are a successful group of tetrapods, even though they don't have the four key-footed feature that tetrapods are named after. Despite this, or maybe because of it, snakes are super diverse. It might seem like this diversity dates way back to the times of dinosaurs over 100 million years ago. But modern snakes seem to have emerged more recently. Fossils and DNA suggest that snakes started to spread out and evolve after the mass extinction event that wiped out dinosaurs. They took advantage of the empty habitats and niches left behind by the long-gone species. In terms of movement, snakes are super flexible and can crawl, burrow, climb, swim, and some can even fly. The ancient ancestors of snakes were quite different from what we see today, with some species even having well-developed limbs. Snakes continued to evolve through the late Cretaceous period, with various species appearing around the world. Only a handful of modern snake families emerged later, millions of years after the extinction of dinosaurs. The snake fossil record is patchy, making it hard to piece together their evolutionary history. To make sense of it all, scientists turn to DNA analysis. Molecular clock techniques help estimate when various snake lineages split off from each other, suggesting that most of the modern snake diversity is younger than dinosaurs. Only a few snake lineages survived the mass extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous. But these few survivors managed to give rise to the incredible diversity of snakes today. Some snake families persisted for millions of years until they eventually went extinct, while others thrived and diversified in the aftermath of the mass extinction event. This pattern of survival and rapid diversification resembles what we see in the bird and mammal fossil records after the extinction of dinosaurs. The ability to burrow, hunt in the dark, and go long periods without food help some snakes survive the chaos after the mass extinction. Their flexibility and adaptability allow them to find shelter and thrive when other species couldn't. Snakes can be some of the scariest animals around. Most snake species are harmless and don't bother humans. Even if they wanted to, most snakes are too small to pose a real threat to people. But there are some big snakes out there that can eat surprising things. The largest animal ever eaten by a snake was a 150-pound hyena devoured by an African rock python. I'll bet that hyena wasn't laughing then, huh? Before that, the biggest meal on record was a 130-pound impala eaten by a rock python. That's impressive. The biggest snakes in the world are constrictors. They tend to suffocate their prey. To eat large prey, the snake itself has to be huge. African rock pythons, green anacondas, reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, Indian pythons, and amethystine pythons are all contenders for the title of the largest snake in the world. They can grow to incredible lengths and weights. And that's it. I'm done with snakes now. Ew. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.